the Easter edition 2015 day two. We're here to bring you eight matches today. It's going to be the longest day of the tournament and the best day of the tournament. So many good matches coming up for you. I'm your host, Calm Leslie, and with me to cast these games for the rest of the day is TJ Azumakuti Sanders. TJ, what a day of games we've got lined up today. Oh yeah, for sure. And uh, we're starting off early over here on the, the west coast of of the U.S., but we definitely have fantastic lineup of games. I mean, uh, D2 Tides of Time is going to be the first one. We have the quarterfinals later today, and you, you talked about it earlier, filled with American players. <laughs> yeah, well, we're guaranteed to have at least one American in the final since the entire top four of the bracket. Uh, we're going to see Jab versus Dog and Hyped versus Chucky in our first two quarterfinals coming up later on. Uh, so we're definitely going to get an American in the top side of the final. And it's up to, uh, I guess, D we're going to have D2 and Tides. So we're going to have at least one more American in the top eight. And then uh, it's down to Muzzy to see if he can ensure another berth for the Americans. But yeah, so we've got Tides of Time versus D2 coming up first. Then we're going to bring you Muzzy versus Gara, which is another one I'm really looking forward to. Uh, Tice versus Sho. And then everyone's favorite, Forsen. He's going to be coming up at the, at the end of the top eight with uh, Oliak, who's one of our players from Punchline Esports Club. Uh, it's a very interesting matchup, looking forward to seeing that. But yeah, some great games coming up today. Uh, and then of course, we're gonna bring you all of our top four matchups as well. So all the four players you're gonna see in our first, all the players you're gonna see in our first four matches, you'll see the winners again later on. And obviously Jab versus Dog and Height versus Chucky as well. Let's talk a little bit about D2 and Tides of Time here. I really like this matchup for a lot of reasons, but fundamentally, I think these are two players who made a real impact especially in the latter half of 2014, but haven't really done anything in 2015 so far. Tides of Time winning the WEC tournament uh, was one of the highest earning players last year, won nearly $100,000 worth at the WEC, um, did, a, did very well in the World Championship qualification as well. D2 got all the way to the quarterfinals of the World Cup, of uh, the World Championships. But uh, as I say, neither of them really made an impact this year so far, TJ. Yeah, not really. And I, I still remember the story of Tides of Time trying to come back to the U.S. with the the cash prize that he made from uh, from WC. So that was that was pretty amusing. I'd I'd say um, getting caught at customs, and it's 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 always cool to see uh, players win large sums of money for playing Hearthstone. But uh, see, his, his problem was he declared it at customs and he told him he couldn't take it out, and then it took him what six months to finally get paid. Uh, in a, in a slight aside, the uh, Jack Etienne, the the owner of Cloud9, hit their, uh, I think it was the Dota team, or it might have been the League of Legends team, also won first prize at WEC, and he just didn't declare the money and took out of the country in a backpack. Um, and well, I can say go. that, because he gave me that on the record to print in an article about WEC having not paid people. Yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, he, he did finally get paid his money, which is good. So he's one of the highest earning players from last year. One, the, one of the, I think the second biggest individual cash prize after Firebat. So uh, certainly a player looking to make to stake a claim for, you know, the World Championships going forward this year in different tournaments. And but he has definitely been inactive. He's had a little, I think like a three month hiatus, and now he's coming back and trying to make an impact. And uh, certainly made an impact at Via Game House Cup by getting locked in a bathroom. But uh, I don't think that's quite the sort of impact that he's looking to make. Yeah, uh, definitely not, definitely not. But it should be should be good games. Uh, also, keep in mind this whole event that we're doing is uh, for charity as well. Uh, the Child's Play Foundation is uh, a foundation that um, don gives money to kids who are in hospitals who are sick, and uh, makes their 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 stay in the hospitals or their last days a little bit more enjoyable. So, uh, if you guys want to contribute, make sure you head to the links down below. You can. Uh, donate anything is appreciated and the five thousand dollar prize pool of course that's going to the players they will be encouraged to to maybe give some of that to the to the charity as well not required but of course encouraged since that's the the, the whole point of the event so it's all all for all for good all for good absolutely lots of other things going on as well if you want to enter the raffle to win 20 packs just uh, type raffle in the chat and you'll get the link to enter that raffle where you can win 20 packs i've entered tj i think you've entered as well uh yeah. trying our luck spam exclamation mark packs the whole day if you spam exclamation mark packs it increases your chances to win 
Absolutely. And uh, all this weekend, while you're watching the tournament, if you want to pick yourself up a game from the Kingdom of Store, it's maybe GTA 5, maybe Mortal Kombat 10, maybe Pillars of Eternity, any of those great new games that are out, you can use the code 4CHARITY to get 5% off as well. And don't forget, the biggest league competition in Hearthstone is currently going on as well, the Kingdom Pro League. And from this coming week, it's moving to Tuesdays and Wednesdays, as opposed to Tuesdays and Thursdays. So make sure you don't miss that with Noxious and Lothar. That's going to be 6 p.m. C. ET Tuesday and Wednesday and KPL Insight with me on a Friday at 6.30 bringing you the highlights and interviews with the players as well. Um, it's pretty crazy how many days of Hearthstone Kingwin is producing in a, a seven day period. I think we, we may we may do KPL Insight tomorrow on Monday. We've not, not set in stone yet. So if we do that, it's going to be six days of Hearthstone in a seven day period. It's pretty intense. Pretty, pretty intense. And uh, always, always look forward to watching uh, more more Hearthstone matches. It's nice to have a, a consistent league like that to be able to to watch and, and to reference and to see players and to see meta grow week from week. So great stuff. And of course, um, uh, we're getting close to jumping into that first match between D2 and Tons of Time. But just a quick overview uh, of the format. We do use Conquest here as Blizzard has um, sort of made that the consistent format across all com competitive uh, tournaments since that's going to be the World Championship format. Uh, Conquest is, of course, best of five, uh, except in the semifinals and finals, it will be best of seven. Uh, each player needs to bring three unique decks with three unique classes. In order for them to take the series, they need to win one game with each of their decks. Long gone is the days of Last Hero Standing, where we could see a 3-0 with Zoo or 3-0 with Hunter in a series lasting 12 minutes. No, these players have to have a nice, well-rounded lineup of decks. If you have one bad deck in Conquest and you can't manage to find a win with that one bad deck, then uh, you might just be out of a tournament. So it's a really interesting format, really cool to see, and it makes for some really exciting matchups. Yeah, and we'll talk a little bit more as we go along through the day of the, the strategy involved and the tactics of deck picking and lineups and things, uh, and how you the order in which you play your decks is very important. We will talk about that going forward. I want to talk a little bit about uh, D2 here for a second. We talked about Tides of Time and his record, obviously, D2 getting to the, the top eight of BlizzCon last year. He's a player who uh, I, I think I know pretty well at this point. I did, uh, I've watched a lot of his games. I watched a lot of his streams. Uh, I did cast with him in the past as well. Very analytical player. I mean, uh, his uh, his main line of work is he's a tennis coach. So he is a, a teacher and a, you know, a thoughtful person by profession. And that really comes through when you're watching his streams, very in, uh, very educational streams. I'm not surprised that we do have the decks here. He is bringing Warlock, and I think Warlock is probably D2's favorite class uh, from what I've seen. Um, and Tides of Time will be opening with Warlock. We're just getting, waiting to find out what D2 is going to be open with. Oh, okay, so there's going to be a Warlock <laughs> mirror match in our first game. And this will be really interesting. As I say, D2, very strong Warlock player. I would expect it to be uh, Handlock or Demon Lock, one of those variants. Um, I'm not sure what Tides will bring, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, yeah, I, I really like D2. I think he's a, a really underrated player on Trig Esports now after leaving iHearth U. And uh, this could be a really big opportunity for him to stake his claim for, for the tournaments going forward. So just looking at the, quickly the class lineups, Tides is bringing, they're both bringing Warlock and Druid. Tides is bringing Hunter and D2 is bringing Paladin. Yeah, and Warlock seems to be the go-to class to play first. It's 2014 all over again. Yeah, it really is. And uh, a lot of players are bringing bring Warlock and Druid, which are we're no stranger to seeing Warlock and Druid brought in most lineups. Um, it is there's a a high variation of Warlock decks though currently. There's like really fast Zoo, which is like the traditional Zoo, but just with Imp Gang Boss and in place of like Harvest Golem. Um, then there's like the demon mid-range zoo, which runs usually like Malganis, Dr. Boom, some little heavier hitting cards in the zoo. Then there's demon lock by itself, demon hand lock hybrid. There's just so many variations of warlock right now. And it's a really interesting sliding scale, isn't it? From like yeah, zoo really at is. one end to traditional hand lock at the other. And you can kind of at any point in between build your deck. Mm -hmm. And that's really cool. And it, it, I think that's the direction that Blizzard wanted to take it with a lot of demon synergies happening um, and s sort of weaker class cards, but made up for with the stronger hero power. So uh, Warlock as a class is really exciting to watch and uh, players seem to be opening with Warlock because it's the easiest to take a quick win, especially with Zoo. If both players are opening with Warlock, I think both of them are going to be going with a faster variation of Warlock. 
uh, just because usually in that, that first game in Conquest, you want to be able to just get the win out of the way with that deck. Uh, get a quick win in, get yourself up in the series, um, narrow your options a little bit, and uh, we'll have to see if it's going to pay off for these guys um, because... Yesterday, we saw the player that brought the, the fast deck first usually was the player that actually lost the series, so. Yeah, well, I, as you said, you do have to be very careful, 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 careful with your uh, tactics and conquest and the order in which you bring your decks. And we saw, uh, talking about Zoo, it does often pay to leave that to last as well because it's such a versatile deck with great matchups and bringing, leaving your most consistent deck to last so it can get have a chance of winning, you know, maybe twice or even three times to get just one win with it. And we saw Dog doing that with Zoo yesterday really effectively or uh, Zoo or whatever kind of variant of Warlock it was that Dog was playing. We saw so many yesterday. But uh, And then we also saw yesterday Chucky, who did manage to get a win with his Priest, but it was it was pretty difficult for him. There were a couple of really difficult matchups. He went 2-0 up, it came back to 2-2, and he had to win in game number five. Uh, the priest was a hard deck to get a win with um and yeah as i say he did manage to get the win with it but it did maybe make things a little bit more difficult for him leaving that till last yeah i think the hardest part about chucky playing priest was actually him psyching himself up enough to actually bring priest into a tournament other than it, it actually playing the priest inside the tournament so it is starting in yeah yeah so let's get into this gameplay here it's gonna be game number one Titans versus d2 in a Warlock mirror match. And you can see from both sides here, uh, we see the Void Caller for Tides, but mostly we're seeing Zoo components. And we see the same from D D2 as well with the Imp Gang boss. Yeah, so it's it's still hard to tell exactly uh, what type of Zoo this is, if it's just a heavy Zoo, or if there's uh, a he um, more Demon Reliance. Uh, void Caller doesn't necessarily mean that there's a lot of demons. Yeah. Sometimes Void Caller is used exclusively to pull Doom Guards from your hand. Uh, sometimes you'll see Malganus as well in the zoo because it just synergizes so well with if you have Void Walkers on the board or even Imps from Implosion or Imp Gang Boss. If you can pull a Malganus early on with a Void Caller, sometimes that's just game over right there. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I would expect we're not seeing too much of the Demon Lock variant because we see the Sea Giant from Tides. So I think, I mean, as you say, Voidcaller, even in a, a, a very traditional zoo, at least has Voidwalkers, Imp Gang Boss, and Doom Guards to pull. Uh, so, you know, there's there's at least six targets in the deck for the Void Callers. So you don't even necessarily need to build in more demons to make Voidcaller worthwhile at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very true. Very true. Well, we see strong openings from both sides. We see the Knife Juggler and the Egg from Tides with the Flame Imp. And the direwolf alpha from d2 this is a really difficult position here it's one of those things where you could go face and really push your advantage but also that knife juggler is such a big threat that you really need to deal with um and you want to protect the direwolf alpha but if you run the flame imp you're losing two damage it's uh the difficult decisions you have to make and people say zoo is a an easy deck to play but it's actually not it can be really hard we, t we saw this matchup a couple of times yesterday. This matchup, this mirror match, is actually really, really hard because you have to know when to pressure advantage and when to control and when to be defensive. Yeah, well, the thing about mirror matchups in faster decks is that a lot of times one mistake can cost you the game. And uh, a lot of it's draws as well, uh, especially Zoo, because if, you, if one player gets one drops and the other player doesn't get one drops, the game is pretty much over because Zoo doesn't have any comeback mechanics. So once you fall behind on board, your opponent plays two one drops on turn one. You don't have a play. You're just tapping. Card advantage doesn't really mean anything because it's all about the board with this matchup. Yeah, Tide's falling behind a little bit there on the board, but an implosion gives him some board presence that he sorely needed. Um, a pretty good Lotheb draw, though, for D2 on turn five. That's pretty perfect to draw that on curve. Um, it's not going to really affect much for the spell power, but we could well see the Sea Giant coming down here unless... Oh, D2 opts in the end not to clear, so Sea Giant is an option. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so he's going he's gonna to silence the egg, drop the Sea Giant. I'm not sure about dropping the Sea Giant when the Lothab is there. I guess you kind of potentially reduce the impact of the Sea Giant quite a lot. And double implosion for D2. I wouldn't be surprised if we see that, that implosion come down on the Giant. The, the value of big creatures in Zoo isn't uh, in the Zoo Mirror matchup isn't as great as uh, the value of big creatures in other matchups. Just because Zoo has so many ways to 
um, buff up one of their creatures to take out a single creature, like power overwhelming. Ooh, and that's terrible. <laughs> now he's got to really both bad. of those in. He just needed at least three to yeah. you know, just cleanly trade the low with that band. That's really rough. He might just go face because put his opponent at seven. If he yeah. taps, it's sort of a liability. Forcing his opponent to make the trades, which he's at 24 health, which is pretty healthy for a mirror matchup like this. So I don't think he's really worried. Yeah, and you can see these matchups just snowball so quickly and Tides is in a pretty bad position here on seven health. Does have the uh, the defender of Argus, so he can put a bit of defensive wall up. But there is the implosion in hand for D2 to try and get through some of those taunts as well. So looking like the Haunted Creeper here, I would expect probably Haunted Creeper and Defender of Argus. Mm -hmm. um, just on the two death rattle minions to shore up this board a little bit. Yeah. This isn't really a big health wall, though. Uh, this is a wall that you want early in the game because it's not really the purpose of it isn't really to block damage. It's just to make the trades really annoying because you take out the egg with three health, you summon a four four. You take out the spider with three health, you summon two one one. So, um, well, he can make use of that egg at least with the void terror, but it looks like he's not going to do that that turn because no mana. Yep, rolls four that time. Uh, again, when he only needed three this time, he rolled four. So he's able to kill off that sea giant as well. And a board of re a really annoying board here for D2. Lots of imps and the Origin Squire. But it's pretty, pretty scary. But actually, that power overwhelming and the Direwolf Alpha Tides actually has quite a lot of firepower in his hand here. I don't know if it'll really mean much because at this point in the game, he has to he has to trade everything. He, he can't leave creatures on the board because he can't leave damage on the board. Um. So he's gonna tap because Doom Guard is. Just lethal off the top, but uh, doesn't get it. Can empty his hand, but how he's going to do this is crucial. Uh, because at the same time, 20 health, it seems like a lot, but if you're leaving these big, these high damage creatures on the board, or at least high damage for Zoo, like the 4 damage Nerubian, the 3 damage mm -hmm. Voidcaller, that really adds up quickly. You add on a powerful woman and then a Doom Guard. And sometimes you can lose the game if you just don't calculate correctly and just go straight for face, so. Yeah, this is, a, this is actually a really tough spot for D2. This is one of those spots where the decision he makes here could determine whether or not he takes this game or whether or not he gets burst down and, and gets and gets run away with here. This is a, a pretty scary board as Zoo goes, as you said. And it's what, 11 damage on the board. Doomgar would take up to 16. As you say, Power Overwhelming would be up to 20. So all D2, all Tides would actually need to do is top deck a Doomguard as well. So as with quite a few Zoo matchups, <laughs> this might well come down to... And uh, is he playing the Knife Juggler after the Void Terror? That's uh... uh... He doesn't want to summon an Imp, I don't think. Uh, that's true, yeah. He doesn't want to yeah. put any extra power on the board. Yeah, that's fair enough. Ooh, there's the Abusive Sergeant. We're get getting close. Yeah. But at the same time, he can't really afford to tap. He can only tap if he knows he's going to clear the board. Um, he actually can clear the board. Um, if he puts the Dire Wolf in between the Nerubian and the Imp Gang boss, or actually it doesn't really matter, just as long as yeah, he gets the Abusive Sergeant Gang boss and then use the Abusive Sergeant to clear off. So, um, actually, I don't think he'll tap anyway, just because he doesn't want to get into Doom Guard range. He doesn't want to get yeah. into top deck range, but he can at least clear the board here, which is actually a pretty big deal because that means um, there's no way that he could possibly top deck lethal because usually Zoo decks don't run. Uh, don't run any direct spells anymore. I used to, they used to run Soulfire. I've seen Zeus mm -hmm. tech in one Dark Bomb. Yeah. Uh, but that's I uh, six even, seven even eight more nine ten twelve. It's pretty much just Implosion. This is getting pretty close to lethal here. <clears throat> yeah, he's two damage off right now. So I don't know if he wants to risk tapping into it. Uh, he, he might even clear the board here. He might even take out the egg and the Nerubian just to re just to make sure that. Uh, Power of Warming, Doom Guard won't kill him. But he actually decides to keep it down. Um, I, I might have just cleared that whole thing there. Because now, Defender of Argus, Power of Warming, Double Power of Warming, cards like that would actually win him the game. It would make it so he, would, he wouldn't even have a chance. And there's Doom Guard. If he did have Power of Warming in his hand and top deck the Doom Guard, the game would be over. And he would still have lethal next turn, even if he cleared the Egg and the Nerubian. 
but this is probably going to be enough for tides here the doom go yeah. coming a little bit too late a series of dreadful draws for d2 things like the clockwork gnome is st standing in his way of getting the doom guard but I, I, as we said from such a, a great start getting his opponent down to seven health was then bursted all the way down himself and this is these really swingy plays in the zoom mirror match he's trying to think if there's a way out but i don't think he can take enough power off the board yeah d2 looks like looks like a giant <laughs> and he's really hungry and he's looking at those eggs like he wants to eat them I wouldn't yeah I wouldn't eat those eggs they're probably not that nice been there for I a long time think. oh it looks like yeah he I think he realizes that, that there doesn't seem to be a way out of this yeah I'm not sure what he's what he's trying to play around with here Ooh, the reversing switch yeah, I, I still think it's enough damage because uh, the Dire Wolf's going to buff it. Wolf Plate comes out with Power Overwarming, easily lethal. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. So that's going to be game number one. Going over to Tides, uh, I say looked really assured for, for D2 right at the start there. The Tides able to burst it down over a course of about four turns, just able to take control of the board, really make a difference. And uh, yeah, that's going to be game number one. So the Warlock for Tides is locked out. He's got his Hunter and his Druid here. I wouldn't be surprised if we see D2 continue with the Zoo, just because it does have such consistent matchups. But uh, the Hunter versus Zoo could be an interesting matchup, and that's generally, that's obviously pretty favored for the Hunter because of the way the, the hero powers interact. Yeah, that's true. Because um, both when both hero powers damage one player, usually the player that's getting damaged by both hero powers is going to be the one to lose in faster decks. Uh, also, the new style of Zoo is sort of uh, flood the board technique. Um, implosion, uh, Imp Gang Boss makes Unleash the Hounds so much stronger. Uh, usually they have a lot more low health targets than what they used to. Uh, like sub two, like one health targets than they used to. So Explosive Trap's really great. Um, and usually they can just outrace. And a Zoo is forced to either play board control, which usually never works or race themselves and sometimes they can put out a lot of damage but usually hunter has that um, yeah, and it so is going to be hunter versus warlock yeah we're going to see the hunter versus the warlock and uh not sure what version of hunter tides might bring could be face hunter could be a mid-range hunter either way it's a pretty good matchup for him against zoo yeah and d2 is sort of on the ropes here um you mentioned he wants to keep playing the, the zoo lock just because it does have decent matchups against a lot of things but it doesn't really have decent matchups against almost anything that Tides is bringing. Uh, Tides also, his last deck is Druid, which Druid can, if they have a slow start, it can be, sometimes it can be rough against Zoo. But really all a Druid needs is, is like spells in their opening hand, like either Wrath or Swipe, um, or an Innervate play early. Even just an Innervate Shade can completely stop Zoo in its tracks because it trades up against a lot of one-drops. And if you take out the first couple of creatures for Zoo, without losing anything much of your board and that shade starts to get out of hand sometimes that's that's all you need to win the game as a druid so exactly well we do see this is probably a face hunter from tide from tides so you can see the war again we saw the uh wolf rider in the mulligan good array of one drops uh does have to make the choice between the warg and the lepronome and the abusive sergeant uh goes for the lepronome which is pretty good it, tra it trades up well with things like flame imp um we're gonna see d2 just go face here um, it's gonna be a lot. Gonna of, it's gonna be a lot of going face. Yeah, certainly. Um, could actually see him clear the board here. You could coin it the eagle horn bow, and I think that is actually what he's thinking about here. Yeah. In this matchup, does... this is one of the only matchups where Hunter plays uh, slight board control, um, and usually they play slight board control early on in the matchup, uh, just because Zoo is so momentum based. Uh, you play those early creatures, and you use those early creatures to sort of run away with the game and uh as long as hunter can clear the first couple uh make room for for their cards to hit face make the warlock start running out of cards so they're tapping every turn and trying to top deck every turn uh as soon as you put them on the defensive you basically you basically already won so exactly this is uh a pretty good hand for tides does have options the knife juggler the uh the second leprechaun coming to hand as well so it's always one drops his options as well and but yeah just opting to hero power and build up the, and develop the worgen 
I like this. I think you need to start hero pairing as, as early as possible in this matchup just to really hammer home that advantage that you have over the Warlock hero power. Um, and putting nothing on the board that he can kill is pretty useful as well, so he can't proc this Nerubian in any way. He also gets wants... a Lothar for next turn again. That's pretty useful for D2. He also wants to be conservative with the Knife Juggler Unleash the Hounds combo. So last turn, he didn't really have any plays. He would either float a mana by playing Organ Infiltrator and Leopard Gnome, um, or play one in Hero Power. And if you're going to play one, Organ Infiltrator is probably the better one to play in that situation. Has Burn now as well. So this is... I, I really like this hand right now from uh, from Tides. Yeah, I think it's a pretty, pretty strong hand. Um, he's thinking about trading the Direwolf with the Worgen, which wouldn't wouldn't certainly be a, a bad option. Does have the Knife Juggler as well. The Lotheb's going to suck, though. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> going to be pretty bad. He wants to set up that turn five Knife Juggler and Unleash the Hounds combination. That's, that's, that's what he's playing for in his hand right now. That's what he's playing around in his hand. Um... So he's like, okay, next turn, he's probably going to play two creatures. I'm probably going to get a, a three or four um, Knife Dragger Unleashed the Hounds. But most likely, Lothab's just going to be dropped here, and that's going to make Tides of Time very sad. Sad boys indeed. Yeah, this is going to be tough. Uh, a good turn five Lothab for D2. Not, got it in the second, in the first game. I got it in the second game. It's pretty, pretty impactful in this matchup. Uh, as you say, it's going to be able to stop the Unleash the Hounds. It's going to give him a little more time with his board to develop what he wants to do. And again, a decision whether or not to trade for this Leper Gnome. I think he probably has to go for it because this Leper Gnome can do so much damage with the Death Rattle that you just need to take it off the board as quickly as possible. So he's going to trade it, see what spare part he gets. Time Rewinder, not terrible. I, he's actually going to save the Lotheb. I don't like this. <clears throat> There's... He could wait for a better draw for Void Terror next turn. I know he wants to Void Terror the Egg and get that power. Um, but... Um, ah, this 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 play is putting a lot of power on the board, but I feel like it, uh, if he w was a little bit more conservative with it, he could uh, get a, an even better Void Terror with a stronger board that he could protect with the with the Lope that the Fallen turn. Uh, I guess it's pretty inconsequential, though, because he's still getting a big Void Terror now. He, I said earlier, one of the win conditions of Zoo in this matchup is just straight up racing. And when you have a seven attack creature on the board on turn five, you'll usually fare pretty well. Oh, and he gets really good juggles to the face. Oh, the juggles to face. That's the perfect juggle. Yeah, it's exactly what you want. Oh, no. That's actually really close. Wow, that's, yeah, that's 16, 16. damage. <laughs> that's insane. Yeah. And it can actually, I mean, even if, if um, oh god, this I have so much damage in hand. Is that, Tides actually has lethal as well. Yeah, so... Tides are, Tides are super lethal. That's not lethal anymore, though. Because he, the kill command's yeah. gone now. And so he'll have three, four, four. five. Oh, no! <laughs> I think he's... That's, yeah, that's exactly damage. lethal, right? Is it? Isn't it? Uh, it's it's three, three damage from the Glaive Zuka, two on board. That's yeah, it's five. one off. Yeah, one, yeah, off. one off. It's one off. Yeah, that yeah. Lotheb is... And that one trade as well. Yeah. Um, he could, uh, like, uh, he's also one mana off. He could also use uh, the second Glaive Zuka and just override the first to just get the yeah. battle cry. Yeah, no, that's definitely true. So that's going to be game oh. number two for the D2. Tides one mana off lethal. Yeah, yeah he, knows he's, he knows it's over, obviously. So D2 getting away with that zoo. Mm -hmm. So both players now locked out of their zoo. But this Face Hunter is a pretty difficult matchup for D2. Um, he has the Druid and the Paladin left, and we will, I guess, wait and see which one of those he decides to bring. It's difficult to see which of these decks has a good matchup against the Face Hunter. Yeah, so it turns out that Lothab play, uh, not playing that Lothab on that turn was actually really good, because um, he's still got the, the high... Zapcasters. Well, yeah, yeah, he's still got the high power um, Void Terror. Um, in my head, I was thinking if he made the Void Terror play that turn... Uh, his void terror would only be um, would only be a three attack void terror because I thought he was just going to get the uh, the egg, just uh, get the egg out with the void terror and just have like a three five void terror just to get a bigger body on the board. Um, but he played it really well. He got a lot of power on the board, and then what he did was he set up his own lethal and and blocked his board with the lotheb, like uh, held onto his board with the lotheb. So. Uh, ended up being really smart play in the end. Yep. 
D2 is going to go to Paladin. Tides of Time is going to stick with the Face Hunter, which I think is a pretty smart move. Uh, it's a, a pretty good deck for him against this lineup. So uh, what can Paladin do here to beat the Face Hunter? <laughs> it's really hard. It's really, <laughs> really tough. Uh, they have to have... <clears throat> Excuse me. They have to have a, a really strong opening end. Zombie Chow is almost a must. Zombie Chow or Shield and Minibot is almost a must. They have to be able to trade early with the first couple creatures that Face Hunter is putting out. But the nature of Paladin in the sort of um, like heavy tempo, flood the board and and get uh, like a big board control early on, just doesn't work against Face Hunter because that actually works against you. And a lot of times, Paladin, their board takes a little bit of time to ramp up. Um, they can't race like Zoo can. Uh, they can't have heavy taunts like like Ramp Druid can. Uh, they can't have. They don't have overwhelming amounts of health gain like a priest or like a warrior. So all the things that you need against Hunter, Paladin just don't have it. And then pile on top of that the fact that uh, again their hero power sort of works against them in the form of Unleash the Hounds, Knife Dragon Unleash the Hounds. It's usually a really tough matchup. Yeah, and this is a pretty bad hand for D2. The two pilot shredders, Consecrate is going to be potentially useful later on, but certainly not right now. Has the owl for this mad scientist though, so actually, so not a bad start. Yeah. To be able to reduce the secrets, but he's just going to use the glaive zuka, start piling in that damage, and there's just nothing that D2 can do to to stop the onslaught. Yeah, especially since this turn, unless he draws into something, he's just going to hero power. Okay, okay. At least he draws into the knife juggler because that could have been pretty bad. But I don't know if he wants to use that yet. No, he has. To. Oh, wow. Okay, so this is basically conceding the board over. Um, Knife Juggler, he might want to save Knife Juggler for a Knife Juggler muster. Um, but I don't think you can really afford to try and protect your own Knife Juggler just to get a bigger combo later, because you're not going to have time to do any of that. Yeah, it's it's really difficult to know when he's going to be able to play this Knife Juggler. Like you said, it's... Uh, the Consecrate's going to come down now, and it feels pretty good about being able to Consecrate the Worgen. Uh, and the knife juggler. That's two pretty potent threats that are hard to deal with uh, any other way. And but we're just going to see a knife juggler in response. Oh, this is really difficult. The health of D2 is just taking such a beating so quickly. And he does have Lotheb in his hand for next turn. It's a pretty good response. The one thing you notice about D2 when he's playing is he takes a lot of sips. He's a very hydrated player. He is one of the most hydrated players in the competitive Hearthstone scene right now. <laughs> I I swear, sometimes it, it feels like it, it could just be the same can over and over again, and he probably has like a little tiny like Brita filter next to him, and he fills his cup just just with like two sips every five minutes, and uh, then just takes one little sip from it. He's. Why is it talking about being a ten tennis coach and a, a tennis player? I mean, maybe that's you know he he is an athlete. He knows the importance of being hydrated. A cyber athlete. Well, he's also a real life athlete as well. So maybe that's carrying over from his real life uh, athletics. Real athletes. You have no power here. <laughs> so, uh, Trees Over Champion here, Aldor Peacekeeper. He's going to go for double Aldor. I mean, this does take the board. Um, and there isn't actually a lot in the hand of Tides of Time to respond to this. And he's just going to go for the Leroy play with the Knife Juggler. That's pretty good. Yeah. Oh, kills one of the Whelps as well. Oh, I thought it almost snipes both Whelps. But he's basically, uh, he wins next turn unless there's some sort of life gain. Consecrate! And, oh! Well, he can't Consecrate here because he sort of has to choose over Champion. Um, actually, yeah. there's no way for him to win. Yeah, I don't think there is, unfortunately. <laughs> Consecrate is a really big draw, and if he had, like, three, four more health, Consecrate would have been amazing. He could Consecrate this turn. Next turn, he could True Server Champion and start healing up. He had board control. He was just starting to turn it around, but against he face... needed He needed eight health for Consecrate to be a good draw because he's going to take two damage from the Leper Gnome. And then five damage from kill command hero power, if, even if he clears the board. So he needed eight health for consecrate to be a good draw. So I, even true silver, like true silver attack face, even if he had a way to clear the board, yeah. true silver attack face wouldn't work because he, goes, he only goes up to seven. 
and then you could just run the Leper Gnome in to something. And uh, well, he's going to take two damage from the Leper Gnome anyway, so the healing from the True Silver is basically null. He's hoping that there's going to be no direct damage in the hand of Tides. He knows, though. He knows but it's a kill man. Something like 22 out of the 30 cards in Face Hunter <laughs> do direct damage. And he, he's already seen a couple of the cards that don't do direct damage. So, yeah, that, that is going to be game. So Tides is going to take a 2-1 lead in the series. And that matchup is nearly doomed from the start if you don't have, like, a turn one play when you're the pal. So, uh, yeah, I mean, as you say, the, the draws could have been better for D2. Could have been good enough for him to get a good start with the Zombie Chow uh, and the Shielded Mini Bot. Didn't draw them, wasn't able to get the match going, and uh, pretty predictably, Face Hunter took over. And D2... He does have his druid now to to, fate, to run to the druid and the paladin to, for the druid of of, uh, of tides. But I guess the fate now the face hunter is locked out for tides. I guess that's kind of what D two was thinking, right? I mean, I can win this matchup if I get uh, zombie chow and shielded mini bot, but it's not a great chance. And if I just sort of sack it into the the face hunter, give him his face hunter win, and that gives me two opportunities to beat his druid. Yeah, yeah. So. Tides, of course, just needs that just needs that win with Druid. Um, uh, D2 going to queue up the Paladin. Pretty smart. This Paladin usually has a pretty solid matchup against Druid, uh, where, where Paladin is developing usually multiple threats per turn. Uh, Druid usually only plays one, and Paladin has a lot of ways to deal with some of the really annoying stuff that, that Druid can do. Uh, Dru if a Druid plays an early Innervate play, then Paladin has Elder of Peacekeepers, uh, Druid builds up too overwhelming of a board and start threat starts threatening uh, Force Nature Savage Roar. Paladins have a quality Consecrate to be able to, to as a comeback mechanic. Um, also, Paladins usually tend to have um, a, a, a board that's filled with lots of medium-sized creatures, like Paladin Shredder. Um, even just their hero power can turn into 3-3s three with Quartermaster. And Druids struggle with clearing lots of medium-sized creatures. All right, so, okay. So we, 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 we're going into the gameplay here. And we see from the hands some pretty interesting deck choices. Trogs are the Earthenator for the Paladin. <laughs> I love that card. Uh, uh, hasn't seen enough play since GVG. But more interestingly, looking at the Druid of Tides of Time, I was going to say that what we haven't seen, even though Druid is so popular, what we haven't seen yet is a Druid built to beat other Druids. And we see a Grove Tender from Tides, which suggests this may be a, a Mill Druid and a Naturalize <laughs> as well. This is Mill Druid. Oh, man. Okay, so Tides of Time is one of the strongest stronger mill players um he he was one of the innovators of mill rogue uh him and freshka are the two people that streamed uh mill rogue the most and uh he streamed mill druid a lot of times as well and there was one time where he was making a climb up legend and uh he was like top 100 legend playing like mill rogue from 800 which was nice. or sorry mill druid from 800 which is pretty ridiculous and they've gotten a couple tools since then as well uh the grove tender being one of them but I'm still torn on Grove Tender. I'm not really sure if it's a good card. I even hate it. Mill Druid, because <laughs> I think it's it's got even worse now. You've got the Druid of the Flame in the three drop spot for Druid. Yeah. It's just a really bad card. Yeah. I guess it works in this scenario, kind of. But I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Trogzor either. I really don't like Trogzor. The only use I think Trogzor has in the current meta is probably against Freeze Mage, because it basically just secures the win if you can get Trogzor out on like turn seven. Um. Trogzor is infinitely better than Dr. Boom against Freeze Mage, but that's about it. <laughs> like, Trogzor is only good if you're playing it on an empty board. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll see if we get any use of it. It's obviously not in the hand right now. Uh, D2 could have been in trouble there if he played a second creature. Double Naturalize would have drawn him four cards. So, you know, that could have been, that could have been pretty scary, but oh, it's the Volcanic Lumberer. Okay. Poison Seeds, Emperor Thorsan, reduce the cost of your cards, then you Poison Seeds, Starfall, <laughs> and then double Volcanic Lumber. Well, there you go. That's the first draw. Quartermaster getting burned. That's that's a pretty good card to burn. I mean, he'd be, he'd be pretty pretty glad that he's got his Tyrion in his hand right now. D2 is probably super scary. silence right his own Acolyte. That's super smart from D2. That's a really good heads up play against Mildred thinking, hey, I don't think I want to draw cards, actually. I've decided. Change my mind. I've done some analysis on the past three sips that D2 has taken. And okay. I actually don't think there's anything in that can. <laughs> so. 
I mean, I'm a big drinker myself, so that's you know, an, I, that's I, an interesting, I think it's a strong tactic. That's an issue. Oh, there goes another one. There's nothing in there. I swear. I think he just has like multiple cans all in his desk as a big pack. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Innovate Volcanic Lumber. <laughs> I guess that works. Because the innervate kills the creatures and then uh, with the wild pyromancer and then the volcanic lumber comes out for six mana. He is vulnerable to BGH. <laughs> yeah, I mean the BGH is in hand that I guess D2 is probably going to have to go for that. Uh, <laughs> volcanic lumber is seeing its first play here in competitive Hearthstone. I'm pretty sure that's the first time it's ever been seen in a tournament. Well, I mean it just came out like a day ago. Still, we'll it take it. It was released like two credit. days ago. North American players have only had like 36 hours to even play with the card, so. Well, not a lot of great options in hand here for Tide to Time. Does have Thorazan, but he's looking at Wrath. Just wants to cycle. He's trying to think if he can make him draw more cards. Well, oh, there's a Grove Tender. Grove Tender Naturalize, maybe? Or would that draw too many cards? Yeah, I don't think he really wants to go for the naturalizes yet. You can get to the point in the game where your opponent is plays like a big creature on their turn, and then you can like naturalize, naturalize, and kill a big creature and make them overdraw. So yeah, um, I'm not sure how much experience D2 has against playing against <laughs> mill decks, but I can imagine it's not something you see too often. Yeah, I can imagine he's quite scared right now because. When you're playing against a deck that you don't know, that's one of the reasons why um, when you're playing on ladder, playing a, a, adding in some strange tech cards uh, can really increase your win rate because people aren't used to it. We talked about it a little bit yesterday with uh, the whole misdirection and sniping. Yeah. Like, misdirection is great if people don't think you're playing misdirection. You can win or or freezing, freezing Trap and Face Hunter was the or example we saw yesterday. Freezing Trap and Face Hunter, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, we saw that yesterday and that, was, uh, that really, really met was... Uh, a great play um oh, it's uh, tough to know what to do here i mean there's a poison seeds but poison seeds makes the one ones better <laughs> it does and it still summons the death rattle from the pallet of trader so you're you're it's possible that you're going to put more power on the board you're taking away four but you're adding in at least three and possibly more from whatever comes out of the pallet of shredder I like the Emperor Thoris on here because this makes it so that he can make some bigger plays with Poison Seeds. I mentioned earlier in Mill Druid, Poison Seeds Starfall is usually a, a pretty popular combo because it's, yeah. it's uh, like a quality Consecrate, essentially. But for a lot more mana. <laughs> for a lot more mana, unless you have Emperor Thoris on. Yeah. You can get it to be the same mana with just like one turn of almost uh, the same mana with just one turn of Emperor Thoris on. So. I mean, how well does D2 know his Mildred? Does he know that when he plays things like Tyrion that Naturalize is waiting? You have to know, because even if you don't know much about Mildred, if you don't know like exactly which cards you play, Naturalize is the card that you know for sure is going to have two copies in that deck. You don't know if he's going to be playing like the Tree of Life version um, or like Double Healing Touch with a lot of board clear version. Um, there's a couple cards that you can... That you can change it and out and the wind condition for mill druid sometimes changes sometimes they go straight mill and sometimes they'll like run double combo just as a i'll mill you out and then i'll combo you at the end yeah uh, to bring you closer to fatigue so there's a couple different variations but naturalize is one of those cards that you know for sure is there well this is almost the perfect uh court master <laughs> master here i don't know po again poison seeds isn't that great no he, he can actually get pretty high health right here um 28 health with either double anti-kill bot or anti-kill bot healing touch I'm trying to think how much power there is for d for, for d2 he's gonna go for the poison seeds i think yeah there's 22 power on board right now so unless he double heals he would be dead uh but if he poison seeds here then he's not really taking much away he can also he can double heal as well after poison seeds. Oh, the one thing about poison seeds though is <laughs> he one tree and doesn't get spawned, but it's replaced by a two two anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit of a crapshoot there, but he did it. It worked out okay, I guess. This does mean the D two can't play anything. He has to to clear the board a little bit before he can play anything. 
Yeah, and I don't know if he... <clears throat> he does want to play Lay on Hands, because if he plays Lay on Hands, that's his only going to be his only play this turn. He'll be at nine guard, or eight cards. Yeah, so. getting yourself up towards eight cards, that's that's pretty dangerous. <laughs> it's dangerous, yeah. So he's oh. going to go for the Lothab Shredder. Lothab might... Um, be able to almost seal the game here. He does have some heal left with the Antique Heal Bot. But he can't really play anything else with the anti heal block because he's going to be locked out of spells. Yeah, exactly. That's. Oh, 10 mana Starfall. He might have to do it. I think he has to. Yeah. That's really rough. He has to. He'll still leave 9 power on the board plus the 1 power weapon. Uh, so. Paladins don't have any way to do ten or 7 damage from hand. Um. Six damage from hand is usually the most amount of burst that you can account for with uh, True Silver Champion and Consecration. But that's when that tech card plays in. That's when you you play Avenging Wrath. And all of a sudden you do just a ridiculous amount of damage out of nowhere. And your opponent doesn't expect it. They're thinking, oh yeah, Paladin's going to do six, six damage burst. Consecration, True Silver Champion. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, it's, it's a pretty difficult position. He's going to go for the Naturalize instead on the Lothab, I guess. I guess that feels bad because Naturalize, you pretty much want to mill your opponent with Naturalize in this scenario. You don't want to be giving them cards that they can then use. Yeah. You want to be at least giving them burn it, at least making them burn one or two cards off a draw. Yeah. With, uh, with the Naturalize, but this is... Looking pretty tough for Ties of Time here. Does have a Belcher, does have a uh, second True Silver. How's he going to beat anything else with this Mill Druid? What's D2's last deck? Druid? Druid. He's not going to beat a, he's not gonna beat a mid-range Druid with Mill Druid, I don't think. What I want to see is I want D2 to have decided to go with Mill Druid as well to beat other Druids, so we just see Mill Druid there. Oh no. Has that ever been seen before? Probably not in a tournament. I don't think so. Not as long as I can remember. I don't think I've ever seen Mill versus Mill. Because when... <laughs> oh, man. I don't, I don't know how that would go. But I would actually really like to see a deck like that. Or a, a game like that. Mill Druid versus Mill Druid. This is pretty risky to put yourself at this amount of health. Because you're thinking, what's the only thing I need to play around? Double combo. Like, Force of Nature, Innervate, Double Savage Roar. Oh, but he plays Sludge Vulture, so that's okay. Yeah. Because how's Mildred going to win otherwise? I think well, he needs mistake. Poison Seeds. He's dead. Yeah. Okay, so anyway. I mean, he can, he can Starfall and put himself to... And that would put, leave 7 power on the board. He can Starfall, but then he can't do anything else. We can Starfall Swipe, actually. Which would, I think, would we leave whatever came out of the Shredder... And a one-two slime. I suppose. But, but, it, but like you say, I mean, it's, how does he how does he win from this point? He's got to find some time to draw cards. He has to find a safe turn to play Ancient of War. And there's just a lot of pressure being applied by by D two oh, right the now. The patient assassin. I don't think he really cares because there's not really any high value creatures that he's gonna play on the board. I guess Ancient of Lore just really hurts to get Patient Assassined. Yeah, that's that's not great. I mean, any, anything that you can uh, you can kill, any, anytime you can kill something that's like four health or above with a Patient Assassin, that's really pretty great value. I have no time for games. It's very true. If you kill anything that's five or above, you it's officially better than Millhouse. <laughs> Because Milhaus only does four damage. Yeah. The patient assassin does five. if it does five or above, it's better. Second Starfall. That doesn't do him much good. I think he has to ancient of lore here. And if he does that, then he knows that it's just gonna get killed. I mean I guess he could Starfall and naturalize. Uh to clear the board and get the Sylvanas out of the way. That's pretty rough though. And then, like you say, when do you, you have to find time for the Ancient Lore? And then when you've seen Double Naturalize, d is just going to drop Tyrion. Yeah. Alright, he plays Naturalize, Ancient of Lore. 
good sequencing, but pretty obvious sequencing. Yeah. It would actually be really sad if he didn't have good sequencing there. It's actually a pretty good deck for Trogzar. Ooh, the Cold Light Oracle. So that's uh, that's still only nine cards. Oh, Intervene Cold Light Oracle. Oh, oh my oh. god. <laughs> oh, you got to do it, right? You've got to do it. You have he's gonna to. Burn two, yeah, he's going to burn two cards here, D2. Yeah. Intervene Cold Light. Let's look at his face. No, D two is too cold and calculated to react. Um, Black Knight and Eldor Peacekeeper, I think, deliver two cards. So ah, those are yeah. not really that great, and uh, he's actually getting like really close to lethal. So um, I don't think D two is anywhere near being fatigued. Um, and since D two can clear the board here, there's not really any worry of being Force of Nature Savage or comboed. He's actually seen both Innervates. So he knows that double combo is not a possibility. So as long as he stays above 14 health uh, with nothing on the board. Um, okay. All right. So there's two cards left in the deck for D2 and five for Tides. Does Tides have any healing left? A Tree of Life would be my only guess. Um, wow. If, if Tree of Life were to come out here. But Tree of Life would sort of give up any... Well, I'm not really give up any possibility of him losing, but Sludge Butcher is going to come down just to, for a little bit of insurance. Poison Seed Starfall, though. I think he knows. He's just playing around it. He's just saying, well, I'll just get you a little bit lower. Yeah, this is pretty safe play from D2. Does have another healing touch there. <laughs> this is what I said. Does he have more healing? Oh, Clearly no. he does. I was writing him off for this game, but there is actually a possibility that he wins. Because he has Poison Seed Starfall. So if he just heals this turn, um, hero powers up, just bides his time, you know. He actually has less he actually has more cards in his deck than D2. He has five to or well four now to D2's two. So just gonna swipe here. Um, swipe just to take out those like two damage off the board. Almost out of cards. Oh no. Almost out of cards. Got to be aware of how many cards you got. So Zombie Chow super late here to the party once again. Yeah, now you've seen this, the the both naturalizes. I guess Poison Seeds Starfall is the best way to deal with Tyrion at this point. Oh man, so he does run double combo. So I guess the, the second Savage Order must be still in okay. his deck as well. No way. Okay. Oh, no, no. He's got True Silver Champion. He's actually going to have to equip his True Silver Champion, override his Ashbringer to win. Because next turn, he's going to take a point of fatigue, and he knows that combo is is threatening. Oh, my God. This is actually super That's close. That's game! Is that not, oh, my God! That's game! He forced an Aegis Savage Order. Oh, he's going to no. take one fatigue damage next turn. No he way! He didn't play around the combo! No way! Oh my Insane. God. The Tide's only... drawing the combos oh, right in the end. That's gross. That is disgusting. Oh you just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, didn't play around the combo. Oh, man. That is. So bad. And actually, yeah, the uh, hero power. That's... Because of the because of the Savage or being cheaper, I didn't even need the fatigue because he had the hero power. That's incredible. Which. Uh, I guess D2 maybe should have thought about it as well. He was going to have the, yeah. the the Thoris and effect on that Savage were way back. But yeah, so that's going to be it. Tides of Time advancing 3-1 to one with Mill Druid. I'll, wow. I'll, I'll do my best Tides of Time impression right now. Deal with it. <laughs> that's basically what Tides of Time just did right there with... Uh, that's insane. With, I haven't seen Mill Druid in a tournament in so long. That's uh, that's a pretty big oversight by D2, though. Um, it's hard to call it a misplay. Uh, maybe just an unfamiliarity with how Mildred's work, but you know you're going to take a point of fatigue next 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 turn. You know that you're essentially at 14 health. There's really no reason not to um, equip the True Server Champion and try and buy yourself another turn. But, I mean, uh, well played to Tides. That's about the best you can play Mildred at that level of play. And I'm really looking forward to seeing more of that deck in the in the remaining. That looked that looked pretty bad for Tides until he draw the until he draw it until he drew the combo pieces right at the end in the bottom of his deck. I mean, think like what the bottom seven cards of his deck were three of his combo pieces. Yeah, in a in a way that worked out well for him.
because he drew the Colad Oracles at the right time. Um, he drew the Innervate right on time as well. Um, I'm curious to see what those Cold last Light Oracles. Yeah, I'm curious to see what those last couple cards were though. Um, I think he had three cards left in his deck, uh, and I'm really curious to see what those last three cards were. So I have basically all the cards that he had. So when we see that deck later in the day, I'll be able to spot them out. Uh, yeah, we'll see if he has Tree of Life. Yeah. So, uh, but really interesting deck cool series and congratulations to Tides. he's going to be moving on to the quarterfinals later on absolutely so we're going to move on to our next game which is muzzy versus gara after a short break while we're in the break make sure you uh check it down below and do maybe donate to child's play of course child's play uh charity that provides games and consoles for kids uh with cancer make the last days a little bit better make the state in the hospital a little bit better uh there's a link down below to donate and you of course all the donations 100 percent of the donations will go to Child's Play. Kingman doesn't take anything off the top. So all the money that you donate will go directly to Child's Play. We raised $4,450 during the last tournament, which was the winter edition. And let's uh, let's see we uh, let's say we beat that. Let's go for 5,000 this time and see if we can raise that. That'd be pretty great. Um, we can see D2 right now saying he uh, can't say he expected combo in a mill deck, <laughs> uh, which, is, which is fair. Like I can see why he might not have expected it. Uh, as you say, it is kind of a it's a it's an archetype within Mill Druid to have either the straight Mill version or the combo version, and uh, this was the combo version. So it's kind of it's kind of tough. But yeah, we will. Uh, oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> or uh, just heading to a break now. So yeah, check out the charity. Make sure you donate. Uh, check out the raffle. Go buy yourself something with Kingwin with the code, and we will see you back here in ten minutes for Muzzy versus Gara. You're watching Kingwin for Charity Easter Edition.